Jesus for a long time. And I've been running for God a long time. Yes, I've been living for Jesus a long time. And I've been working for God a long time. And I've been singing for Jesus a long time. Yes, I've been singing for my God a long time. And I've been running by day and praying by night. Well, I've got to keep going. It's a mighty hard fight. Oh, but no. No, no, no. No, I'm not tired. Oh, no. And I've been praying to him a long time. Yes, I've been serving my God a long time. Well, it's an uphill journey, but I'm on my way. And working for Jesus, I've got to stay. Well, sometimes my burdens, they press me down. And sometimes I hasten to higher ground. And sometimes I can hardly see my way. Oh, but I get on my knees again and I pray. been serving my God such a long time. Well, it's an uphill journey, but I'm on my way. And working for Jesus, I've got to stay. Well, sometimes my burdens press me down. And sometimes I hasten to that higher ground. And sometimes I can hardly see my way. So I get on my knees again and I pray. Oh, but no. No, no, no. No, I'm not. I'm not tired. No, no, no.
I want to deal with the topic of faith keeps walking. Faith keeps walking. Now, being we work very hard to be biblically sound and we don't want to omit, make any biblical error or misrepresentation, I will convey to you clearly that both worlds are walking. Not just us. This is a... There is a world outside of Christ that is walking contrary to Christ. Deuteronomy makes it clear that there are those who walk after other gods of their own imagination. That world is walking too. Psalms 12 says the wicked walk on every side. That world is walking too. Daniel references the crowd that walks in pride. Jeremiah points out those that walk in lies. And you and I know full well they're going in the opposite direction. And we run into them every day. They're walking too. But I'm not talking about the world. It's again important that we always acknowledge that there's an activity of both worlds. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. I focus, however, on those who have chosen to walk by faith. The faith of the Word of God. It is necessary as I begin here tonight to see somehow the mind of God in His association with the feet of the righteous and His intent in making sure that His divine plan was at least recognized by those who wanted to see God whenever and wherever. We recognize in the creation of man, when He laid man there as He created the dust of the earth and He made all the parts of the body of man, He got to the feet of man. God Almighty knew better than we know that the feet was going to be the foundation of everything else the man was. The feet would hold up the knees and the hips and the stomach and the lungs and the heart and the mind and the ears and the eyes. So he knew that how important the feet would be in that hour of creation. And so God Almighty as he knelt there at that creation and he pulled the dust of the earth together. Amen. And he took the clay and he began to form man. And he got to those feet. And without getting into much detail we will see that he took Five metatorsal bones and five toes. Then he took seven tarsal bones. And that's how meticulously that God Almighty made our feet. Way back in that creation, he laid it all out. He wanted you and I, those that would take the time to see God and to hear God in all that we are. In that great creation then and now, that wherever we walk, we can see God, even in the very steps that we take. And so in that creation of the feet of men, we find the number five and the number seven. How many knows those are divine numbers? The number five is very crystal clear. And without splitting hairs, we have that number five and number seven clearly, always under every life that is represented in this building. The number five and seven means grace, God's goodness, and divine completeness. Every time you believers take a step, I wish sometime we would somehow learn to memorize certain things. Because sometimes it's hard to walk in this rotten world. Sometimes it gets real boggy. Sometimes it gets real messy. And sometimes it's good to say, listen, I'm going to walk today by God's grace and by God's goodness and by God's, by God's completeness. I will walk in the Lord. Every time I took a step, I hear the number five. I hear the number seven. I hear the divineness of God in who I am and the creation of God. Walking in grace, walking in God's goodness, and walking in God's divine completeness and the foundation of all the creation of man. In Him. We live and breathe and have our being. For you see, if we walk and we live in the grace of God and we stay complete in God, we can walk wherever He needs us to walk because our feet are not like the feet of the world. 
You see, we, we, we understand in this hour that Satan doesn't like that. When you look at Satan, he's always wanting to put a, you in a prison house. He's always wanting to paralyze. He's always wanting to stop. He's always wanting to be a, a hinderer in, in the will of God. But when we walk in the grace and we walk in God's goodness and we walk in divine completeness, we can walk wherever He needs us to walk because we are people of faith. Say amen. Now, Satan doesn't like that. Satan doesn't like that. There are two functions that are specifically clear as men and women of faith regarding the feet. It's not a casual walk. It's not a casual stroll through the park. This walk of faith is not that at all. This walk carries something with it. There are two functions of our feet, not only in the spiritual and the natural or vice versa. The two functions of the feet is to be weight-bearing and a propulsion. That's why you have feet, to bear the weight of what's on top of it and to push the rest of whatever you are into that next move. You understand that? That's why you have feet. Amen. Not just to run somebody else out of the room. Those feet are there for two functions, to weight, to bear the weight, and for the propulsion. So it is carrying something and it is carrying something somewhere. Those who walk by faith are carrying something, and they're carrying something somewhere. If you don't understand that, you won't understand why the devil gives you such a hard time as you try to walk by faith and do the will of God, because you are carrying something, and you're carrying something somewhere. Someone abides in me, I still like to sing that song every now and then, He abides, He abides. Hey Amen. I, I can promise you one thing. If you're a blood-bought child of God, you do have something inside of you. Hey Amen. If you'll come to the grips of that, you'll understand why that Satan buffets you like he does. Those divine feet that's walking in the grace of God is carrying something. There's something in your bosom. There's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the power of God. There's the love of God. There's healing in your hands. There's an anointing on your life. No wonder the devil's always trying to mess up your walk with God and always trying to hinder that walk of faith because you're carrying something and you're carrying something somewhere. It is an interesting observation. If we look into the medical observation side of this thing, it is interesting to note that four out of five people will have foot problems somewhere in their life. If that's not a spiritual revelation, I don't know what is. Four out of five people will have foot problems somewhere in their life. Are you listening to me? Somewhere in your life. If the enemy can, he's going to give you a foot problem. Somewhere, that person of faith that's got something to carry, that's got something to do, that's got a difference to make. Hey Amen. That person that's got the light of Christ, that's walking this walk of faith and carrying that light into a world of darkness. Don't you know hell hates that? And he hates you that's carrying it there. I said he hates you that's carrying it there. Why would the devil buffet me like he does? Why would he try to stop me? Why would there be a hindrance? I can tell you, sir, because those feet were meant to carry a load, and that load is this great gospel of Christ. It's interesting to know. If everything is a stumbling block, it might be that we have foot problems. You ever notice, folks, it seems like everything's a stumbling block. Not hot enough, not cold enough, not too big, not too little. Didn't do it this way, should have done it the other way. Everything seemed like a stumbling block to them. They may have a foot problem. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a light walk of faith. I'm talking about you and I, those that have to move, amen, on those feet that, that God Almighty so divinely created. It's not a walk that's casual. This walk of faith does not tolerate idleness. It doesn't tolerate laziness. It doesn't to tolerate carelessness. Neither does it tolerate doubt. But it must move, and the believer must move because it's carrying something with it. You've got to understand that if you won't understand why the enemy fights you as hard as he does. It's not a casual in his sense. Scriptures, many scriptures, talks about how we ought to walk. One of the greatest scriptures or chapters in the Bible is Ephesians chapter 5. He said, when you walk, walk in love. You ought to try it sometime. It works. So when you go walk, walk in love. He said, when you walk, walk as children of life. When you walk, walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but walk. You've got to move if you're going to do the will of God and carry whatever he's put in you wherever it's supposed to go. 
the backdrop of this message. Tonight, I'm keenly aware as a pastor, a preacher, that there's a paralyzing effect gradually trying to settle upon many people. Even those who would sit in this house tonight, there's a paralyzing effect that wants to lay hold on your life. I realize that. I know it. I failed to try to settle on my life. One of the reasons I appreciate this choir song tonight is because I felt that paralyzing effect, trying to penetrate the heart, trying to penetrate the mind of those who were once mighty men and women of faith, those who once walked aggressively, that walk of faith, that paralyzing effect, amen, has come to some and is coming to others if we don't understand what's happening. The climate of this hour is causing people to freeze to the point that they feel they can move no more. Talking about faith never stops walking. It never stops walking. Now you may, it won't. I said you may, it won't. That then is the death of whatever we believed was to be produced. When we can move no more, whatever it was that was to be produced will not ever happen because we have to move to get it there. Somebody... Somebody has to bring the bomb of Gilead. Somebody has to bring the message. Somebody has to meet somebody on the Samaritan road. Somebody has to move. And only the feet of faith gets to where they're going. Only the feet of faith. Genesis chapter 13 verse 17. He said, Abraham... I want you to rise, get your iPod, scan your computer screen, and go to sleep. Get your GPS, be a smart boy, and check it all out. Go to church once a month, and you'll be all right. Don't drink two fifths, one will be fine. Do it in moderation. Oh. Said Abraham, said you're going to be a great example of a lot of people. He said you're going to be a great example of a lot of people. And he said, you're going to have to tell a lot of people how to live. If we could serve God sitting at home, you and I both know most of us would try it. He said, Abraham, it's what I want you to do. Arise. That's a hard part sometimes. But he said, arise, and I want you to walk through that land. Start walking. Now, if you don't walk, you don't get it. But if you walk, you get it. And he said, wherever those faith, faith feet walk, he said, it's yours. But if you are lazy and you don't want to walk, then you don't get it. But if you will walk by faith, Abraham, everywhere you walk, I'm going to give that to you. Are you understanding why the enemy gives you such a hard time as you try to do the will of God? Are you understanding why Satan gives you such a hard time in doing the will of God? Because he knows if that life of faith full of Christ ever gets there, it will occupy what it come to. God knew if he could ever get Israel into Canaan, he'd deal with the Jericho walls. He knew that was no problem. He just had to get Israel out of Egypt, cross that wilderness, get them across that river, get them to the wall, and the wall was full. But sometimes it's difficult to get us to the wall. We don't want to walk that far. We don't want to walk that far. He said to Joshua chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Every place... At the sole of your foot shall tread upon. I'll give it to you. Now don't look at me like you lost your last friend. But I can tell you one thing. One of the reasons some of you don't have no more what you got, you got lazy and you don't walk. You don't walk. The doctor will tell you, hey, I hear a murmur in your heart. The doctor said, you're not doing too good. i tell you what to do. Take two aspirins every morning. Hey, man, baby aspirin will be fine. We take baby everything else. I don't know why we don't do that. I'm referring to milk, not meat, people. Doctor said, I'll tell you what, you've got some heart problems, not doing well. So I'll tell you what you need to do, sir. I, I know you're 110 years old, but you need to go to a walking park walk. 
You say to the doctor, really? He said, yeah, if you do that, we might not have to go up surgery on you. We said, okay, we'll sure be glad to do that. You go home, you tell Ethel, Ethel, here's what we're going to do. Doctor said, if I'd walk, it'd really help all this problem in my heart. So I want you to know, every day I'm going to the walking park. He said, he said I want you to walk two miles a day and you'll live. <coughs> you see some old codger out there, never walked in all of his life. He wouldn't know a pair of walking shoes if he found them. But he's walking out there because a carnal man told him to walk. He said, if you're walking, do you good. He said, I'm going to walk. Every afternoon you see him out there walking. He said, hey, Uncle George, what are you doing? He said, I'm walking. He said, Uncle George, I've never seen you walk before. He said, oh, I've got to walk now. Well, what do you mean you've got to walk now? He said, Dr. Jones, I'm going to die if I didn't. And so we're, we're, we're walking for Dr. Jones, but we're not walking for Dr. Jesus. We'll walk for Dr. Jones all over town. We just walk and walk and walk, whatever he wants to do, two miles, one mile, I want to live forever. But when Jesus said, if you walk, I'll give you where you go. But if you don't walk, I can't give you what you are supposed to receive in me. Oh, we'll walk for that doctor, won't we? We'll change our diet. We wouldn't fast a meal a, a, meal a year. But he can absolutely take every bit of the food away from us. All he got to do is tell us we're going to die. You're going to lose that retirement if you don't quit eating that so much red meat. Hey, man, there'll be no more red meat in the house, honey. We've got to buy chickens. <laughs> God tells us that. We'll argue about him. We'll argue with him for the next six months. Hey, doc, that doctor on the carnal world will do whatever he says. Take two of these, four of these. Hey, man, bend over, sit up, stand up. Matter of fact, pull your clothes off. Because there's no problem. Which way do I stand? <laughs> God says, take off the filthy garments. Take off the filthy garments. God said, take off the filthy garments. God said, take off the filthy garments. God said, take off the filthy garments. And when God said, take them off, we argue with God for six months, and sometimes we never take them off. God says, walk. We argue with God for a lifetime, and we never walk. But let a doctor in this natural world tell us, and we'll walk till we get blisters on our feet, or we don't want to die in the natural. I said, we don't want to die in the natural. Yeah, man. You stop walking, you'll stop occupying. I remember one time, I remember one time, I say this, hey man, probably for all of us, I remember one time, hadn't been preaching too long. I said, Lord, you know, I, 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 nobody's asked me to preach. He said, you don't have nothing to say. <laughs> well, I'd answer that. We didn't go there no more. He said, when you get something to say, I'll find you a place to preach. Because when I give you a message, I'll find you a place to tell the message. But until I give you something to preach, you best just leave it alone. Tell them you don't have nothing to say. That's hard. That's hard for this. Oh, you want me to come? Huh? I'll check my schedule, all right? See if I can work it in. God's really been anointing us there in the home church. Glad you called me. You probably got the best one in town. I said, I said, when you stop walking, you stop occupying. And when you stop walking, you'll lose your vision. Now, well, now how, that, how will that happen? Because you'll think you've seen it all. You, you, you with me so far? How many have seen our shed in the back? I didn't think so. If you'll walk back there, I'll show you. <laughs> I want to see more of God. Amen. Well, you've got to walk to see more of God. Amen. If the enemy says, hey, I'll cripple you, sister. I'll cripple you, brother, and you'll never walk again. He might not just be trying to cripple you. He might just be trying to stop you from taking what he already possesses. And he knows if you get there by faith, you're going to take it away from him. So if he can cripple you up, you will never get there. Amen to God. But if you ever, if you ever get well, my oh God, you'll take it by the grace of God. And the power of God will come. And it'll be yours. My God, do you hear what I'm saying?
Hallelujah. Stop walking, you'll lose that vision. Because you'll believe you've seen it all. Haven't seen it all. I'm shocked every Monday. You stop walking. You'll become so familiar with where you are that holy things will no longer be holy. Well, we're going to know it with all tonight. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Here, brother, you anoint. No, you anoint. No, anybody want it? Oh, forget it. You stay at one place too long, you'll get too familiar with it. Hey, man, you'll get too familiar with it. You don't cross the Jordan River the way you cross the Red Sea. Hey, man, Jesus heals people different ways, always by His power. Sometimes He spoke the Word. Sometimes He made spittle. Sometimes He laid His hands on them. Sometimes He just walked by. But whatever He did, He did it right. He did it perfect. You stop walking and you'll become so familiar with where you are that holy things will no longer be holy. You have to walk. You have to move. Stop walking. You'll move into a habit and a religious repetitiveness that will eventually steal all the zeal and life that lives within you. Just stop. Stop. You don't have to go get drunk. Just stop. Just stop. Park. Park these symbols. Park these emblems of grace. God's completeness. Just stop them, honey. That's all you got to do. And there's nothing else for you. That's the end of the road for you. Just stop. Just stop right there. Let those feet of faith become stagnant. And that's the end of all things. There will be no more occupying. I've said it a thousand times. You'll never get bored serving God. You'll never get bored serving God. God said in Genesis 17 and 1, I am the Almighty God. Lay down before me and go to sleep. He said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. I know what that means. It's not some fig- figurative expression. Be thou perfect. Move with the heart of God. Move with the heart of God with Christ. And for three years or three and a half years, Jesus Christ walked through the land, had sandals on. He was a man who walked. He knew where Capernaum was, Jerusalem. He walked there. Deuteronomy 2, 7 says, He knoweth thy walking through the great wilderness. Psalm 23 and 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley. We're told to walk through the valley. We're told to walk through the valley. Sometimes I, I, I've not wanted to pray for certain people. Because I knew about the problem wasn't mine, it wasn't God's, it was theirs. I would say, Sister, oh, listen, I hate, I don't want to spin the wall on you. And, and I don't want to exert a lot of energy. I'll tell you what, do. Give me your hand. Why? Give me your hand. You walked in this valley, now walk out. I go on. She goes on. A lot of times, that's the answer to a lot of things. Hey Amen. I was preaching one time not long ago. We got a paper mill here in this city. And I don't know if you're familiar with paper mills or not, but I can tell you one thing. They can stink sometimes. <laughs> when I get to a paper mill, brother, and the wind's blowing my way, I don't stop rolling the windows down. <laughs> I mean, they, all, they told me, my daddy, who retired from a paper company, he said, son, that's, that's eggs and bacon you smell. I don't pull over side the road, brother, roll my window down. All that stink, sulfuric acid, caustic soda, all that mess come belly. No, no. You know what I do? <laughs> I wouldn't be preaching today, brother, if I hadn't kept on walking. <laughs> if I hadn't kept on walking, honey, I wouldn't have ever made it. Hey, man, somebody back there would have said, Hey, won't you sit down with me a while? Shoots, here we are. I said, No, no, I got some more to get and some more acreage out. I got to go somewhere else. I can't stay here. I got to go. I'll see you, buddy. And keep walking. You say, What, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? I'm occupied. And I'll never get it until the feet of faith gets there and the grace of God is manifested in my life. You want it? You've got to walk there to it. You've got to walk through the wilderness. You're not going to fly through on some helicopter. I wish I could use the greatest people I've ever met. You're the only people I've ever met. No, just kidding. I wish, I wish, I'd say, brother, listen, I just thought I'd tell you, you've got, you got a dry wilderness ahead for you. It's an awful wilderness. I'm telling you, that thing's dry. Did I ever tell you about that wilderness? It's awful. But don't worry, brother, we've got a helicopter for you. Air conditioning. <laughs> brother, she used to get in this helicopter. God said, you don't get no helicopter. He said, you see that wilderness? Start walking, buddy. <laughs> Me? Me? I speak in tongues. He said, walk. Yeah, but I'm in the choir. He said, walk. Yeah, but God, I'm the preacher here. Walk, shoots, I said, walk. Walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Therefore, Satan has learned that he has got to attack one or the other. Either attack the faith or attack the walk. Somebody better get a hold of that now. Either attack the faith or attack the walk. I've, I've seen those scholars. I'm not one of them. In some ways, I wish there was. Hey Amen. They, they, they'll, they'll sit in that study. My dear pastor here, Brother Clinton, made a statement the other day that absolutely I'm still just, I'm, I'm just really, I'm chewing. <laughs> All I can tell you. He said there, there, there can be an idolatry in sermon making. Preacher, listen to me. That man said that to me. I'm telling you, it burnt slam through my shoestrings. He said, there can be an idolatry in sermon making. Hey, man, you sit there, however you got, pull out your commentaries, flip through, run references on everything, get your a Septuagint out, flip through all of that. After a while, you got a cute little sermon, but you're still sitting down. All that is is a sermon. There's sermons everywhere. I got books of sermons in there, but somewhere God's got a message, and that message has to come. And a lot of sermons, but dear God Almighty, can't we walk somewhere and find a message from God and tell the people we got to walk, people, if we're going to get out of here. Moses getting the children of Israel out of Egypt. He said, how, how are we going to get out of here, Moses? They said, well, there's not going to be no train. I can tell you that. Well, how are we going to get out? He said, just follow me. And they started walking. Forty years, mister, they walked. But I ain't tired yet. <laughs> I'm still walking. I'm not tired yet. Hey, man, I watch these men. <laughs> Seem like everybody's older than I am. But I figure if they could make it, I can make it. Man, every time I see these older men uh, preaching, jumping, worshiping God, I say, thank God there's hope for me. Hey, man, I'm not worried about the hair. I just want to keep the energy. <laughs> I said, Satan's learned. He said, all right. They're going to read the Word. They're going to keep going to church. And they're going to hear, oh, 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 brother, hallelujah, every service. And old brother, hallelujah, is going to preach his heart out. And old brother, hallelujah, is going to, going to preach message after message from God. Amen. And we're going to go to church and we're going to sit there and we're going to hear the word of God. And faith is going to grow, grow, grow. What's wrong with you, brother? What do you mean? I've got a lot of faith. If you walk, you'll have faith. And you'll have works. Because faith without works is dead. 
You can't sit there, honey, and just take in and take in and take in and take in. After a while, Dr. Jesus said, Hey, I'd give you something now. I want you to walk with it. I want you to walk with it. I'd give you faith. Amen. Now walk with it. I said, Hell, attack, attack that faith. Hell, attack that walk. There's a lot of people that have absolutely bloated, spiritually speaking, because they've heard message after message, word after word, interpretation after interpretation. They've been to service after service. they got faith, 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 but they're paralyzed. Because they don't walk with it. If you don't walk with it, it don't work. Because God doesn't give it to you to consume upon your own fleshly lust. He gives, gives you what He gives you so you can give it to somebody else. And so He says, I'm going to give you faith. Now walk with the faith. And so the enemy says, hey, I'm going to either attack the faith or I'll attack the walk. And either way, we get in trouble when hell wins. Many Bible-believing people hold on to a portion of faith, but they no longer walk. Satan has affected those feet. Satan has affected those feet that are, that are to move in the will of God. Lame men and women are more prevalent today than there ever has been, in my opinion, in the history of the church and, and, and that I'm aware of. The spiritual realm. There's a lameness in the spiritual realm. More so, I believe, than in the natural realm. But I've learned one thing about this walk. Is this walk's not a cute little stride, but it's step by step. And if you don't keep it broke up into steps, you're going to fall. The steps of a good man are ordered in the Lord. Amen. I, I, I like to walk. Amen. I like to walk, but you got to walk right. Amen. You can't walk circumspect. You got to walk circumspectly, not as fools. Amen. All that walk is broke up into steps. If you're not careful, you'll want it all together, and there'll be no preciseness to your life. He said, The steps of a good man are ordered to the Lord. He said, The Spirit of God leads those men and women who walk in the faith. They have to know that the faith is the key to it all. Amen. The portion of faith has to be there. Satan works to affect the feet because if he can keep you from getting where you want to get, you will never occupy anything else we built this church well over 10 what 12 years ago 10 or 12 I don't remember I can tell you I, I, we, we had for the most part walls up working on it the big steel beams inside of these walls just humongous beams main support beams with awesome footers in the, in the, in the ground and I remember I come on the property one day. There was absolutely none of, none of this here. Just, just, just maybe the piece of roof, the cement, the roof, and some I-beams. But I, 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 I was one of those days. I just, I just seemed like I just, it was just tough to take another step, Pastor. I, I don't know another way to say it. And, and I, I kept looking. And, of course, we're here on a major thoroughfare and Highway 77 here from the church. Just traffic was just horrendous, just car after car. And I just knew I just, I'm in a place, I've, I've got to pray, brother. I, no matter if I lay down in the parking lot, did just have to laugh. Because I, I've come to that place, I could feel a weariness in, 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 my, in my steps. I could feel a, a weakness trying to take hold. I could feel doubt trying to replace faith. I could, I could sense that something, something was trying to overtake and overcome. And I remember I walked over and I said, I, I, I can't just, just stand out like a, a neon sign. So I found a huge beam that was over here on this wall. And if you're familiar with beams, you know, they got flanges, huge flanges on it. And, and, and I know I'm a big man, but I, uh, I, I just, uh, the road, I just backed up into that steel beam like that where nobody could see me from the main highway. And I wear up like a baby. I said, oh, God, we've come this far. I said, God, I can't quit walking now. I can't quit walking now. We've come this far by faith. I stood over there, backed up in that old beam. No doubt I got rust on my shirt. I could care less. But I stood there and I wept. I said, God, we walked this far. I can't stop now. I'm halfway through. I got to keep going. I said there, brother, backed up in that old beam. And I said, God, give me strength to make another step. Help me to make another move. Help me to lift my feet one more time. My God, don't let me be a cripple. Let me finish what you've called me to do and I got through praying honey I walked out of there I walked out of there I walked out of there and here we are and here we are Satan can he'll affect those feet 
Those feet must be, all walks must be broken down into steps. There's been a lot of men got ahead of God. Amen. There's been a lot of men got ahead of God because it ceased to be steps. It became nothing more than a casual walk. Amen. God become a casual thing. Amen. We're going to go tonight. I don't know if we go tonight. We may go tomorrow night. I don't know if we're going to sing or not. I don't know. I think I'm going to pay a little tithe. Yeah, I'm not going to pay a little tithe. How are you doing? It's a nice day, isn't it? Boy, the sun is coming going down. Beautiful evening here, isn't it? And it turned into a nice little casual stroll. And hell loved to have it that way because it ceased to be a faith and it ceased to be a conquering element. Those souls of the feet of those who are faithful, the men, the Joshua, the Caleb, when they walk, hell doesn't want them to get there. When they walk, the enemy doesn't want them to get there. Not on your life, no, sir. You see, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered to the Lord. Satan hates that. You see, somewhere along the line, Satan's going to say, where are you going? You're going to be walking one day just in the will of God. You're going to be in the will of God the joy of the Lord's going to be, and you just feel good about yourself, and this is what you're doing, and glory be to Jesus. I'm a Christian full of the Holy Ghost. I am walking by faith. And Satan's going to come in his great anger, and he's going to say, what are you doing here? And if you're not careful, you're going to try to answer him. Well, I, I don't really know. I, well, I've just tried to. I'm just trying to be a Christian. I, I'm just trying to do the will of God. I felt like maybe I was supposed to be here. You know, I thought, you're dead right there. You're dead right there. But when Satan comes to you and he says, what are you doing here? You tell him, my steps have been ordered of God. And if you got a problem with me being here, you'll have to talk to God. Now get out of my way. I've got to take the country and I've got to occupy the land. Hallelujah. There's been times I knew I better not answer the door. Because I wasn't clever enough to respond back to that lying devil. I said, you'll have to talk to God. I'm here because God told me to come here. I'm doing what I'm doing because this is the will of God. I'm walking where I'm walking because it's the will of God. If you step in and you voice your own reasoning rather than saying I'm here because God put me here, then the argument will be lost. We have already heard it referenced that the first miracle after the Holy Ghost came in the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 3 was the healing of a lame man. Now isn't that interesting? If he hadn't healed that lame man, we might have the Holy Ghost still in the upper room. I'm familiar with the 120 sister. Thank you. He healed the lame man. He said, I want you to help us carry what we got here. We just had an upper room experience, son. I want you to help us tell everybody. And he said, you can't tell it sitting there like that. He said, so we're going to heal you. And said, when you get up, Hey, man, don't you lay back down, but when you get up, you start walking. And you start walking with what you got. Now, the enemy's not going to like what you got, and he's going to look up that road and see you coming. And he's going to see you got something that he don't want you to have. But you just say, in the name of Jesus, I'm coming anyway. Have something in your heart, something in your bosom. Let virtue be in your bones, fire be in your spirit, and carry on to do the will of God. The healing of a blame man after the Holy Ghost had come. It's not enough to be healed, but it then must break into a divine walk. Peter and John. John said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. A lot that rose up. A lot that rose up, brother. Amen. I've, I've, watched, I've watched the Billy Graham Crusades. I've watched them sing just as I am without one plea. But also looked at the statistics. And all those people, as George Beverly Shea sung, just as I am without one plea, as they came down out of the balcony, stringing down, counselors and all, as they came down, they ran some surveys and they said only 2% of the people that's ever come down in the Billy Graham Crusades was ever found in a church. 2%. I said a lot of people rise up, but not everybody walks. Because if that was true, I wouldn't be preaching this message tonight. 
The book of Acts chapter 3 uses the word walk twice. The same verse, Acts 3 and 8, uses the same word again in verse 9. He left the man walking and praising God. Mark chapter 2 is a man sick of the policy, healed. He said, rise, arise, take up your bed and walk. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to see us when we make the rapture. I, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty quick based on the scriptures. But I know one thing. If it's right, the last thing they're going to see is our feet. Huh? They're not going to see your pretty hairdo. Don't be jealous of mine. I said, they're not going to see your pretty hairdo. They're not going to see your big car, your big house. Hey, man, if God lets them see us, they're going to look at our feet. Those feet that walked by faith. Those feet that didn't stop. Those feet that didn't give up. Those feet that walked in the goodness of God. Those feet that walked in the completeness of heaven. Those feet that walked by grace. Last thing they'll see is God. God's grace. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. We made fun of those people. And we made fun of those people. But the last thing we would see, if God allows, if God allows, would be the feet of the precious ones who have done the will of God. The world doesn't seem like it's buffeted. I mean, every time I look at them, they're building bigger barns. Look like they're having a party every day. It don't seem like the world's having much contradiction, Pastor. Looks like they're doing pretty good. Amen. We, however, on the other side, trying to obey the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, trying to do the will of God, on the other side, we seem like we're constantly buffeted. It seems like there's always something pushing against us. Sometimes it's Satan himself. Why is that? His effort sometimes is not to get you to go get drunk. His effort sometimes is not to try to get you to go get, get in a vial of cocaine. That's not at all. If he can get, get you to stop, it's dead there. And if it's not dead there, we'll be dead there because you begin to think things are not true. And that that was once holy now comes unholy because you're so familiar with it. There's no more taking new ground. There's no more taking new ground. Not at all. His effort is to stop that walk. Because that walk is associated with faith, and when faith arrives at a destination, something's going to happen every time. We just don't want Jesus to get here. Man, demon-possessed, Jesus walked up. He said, have you come to torment us for our time? He wished he'd never walked in the village. But when Jesus got there, everything changed. It was that walk of faith. That, that's, that's the nature of it all. That, that, the, that, the, that the whole of the flesh is an expression of the spiritual. Amen. The outer man is an expression of the inner man. Amen. The outer man must see, but the inner man must see as well. The inner man must hear, the outer man hears. Amen. The feet of the righteous, amen, must be... <coughs> must behave as the feet of Christ himself as he walked this earth. If the enemy's effort is to stop the feet of faith from walking, because when you get there by faith, something happens every time. Romans 10, 15 says, Beautiful are the feet of them who bring the gospel of good news. Satan's desire is to make all men sinful and carnal, to remove the supernatural assets of who we are. I don't know how hope everybody hadn't won't be able to say yes to this, but if you ever had a time in your life, despite seemingly everything you could do, the enemy approached you with all the imps of hell. I'm telling you, he come with a force. He come with a force that was absolutely demonic and, and supernatural in that evil realm. And when that force came against you, it knocked you down. And you knew something had to happen. And you heard enough of this message. He said, what am I going to do now? He said, now I'm going to have to walk on my knees. But I'm not going to quit walking. I'm going to keep walking. Until I get enough of strength, I'm going to get up. Because I can't stay back there. Them buzzards will get that sacrifice. If the fire don't fall on the sacrifice, the buzzards will come get it every time. If you don't keep moving, if you don't keep moving, if you don't keep moving, that devourer's going to come. If every time, if you can't walk at full steam, walk at partial steam. If you can't walk on your feet, walk on your knees. Pray your way out. Amen. 
Oh, my God. Satan's desire is to make all men sinful. Amen. If you get knocked down, I suggest you keep walking. This time you may have to walk on your knees. When the prodigal son came back to the house, in Luke chapter 15, verse 22, the first thing the father said, he said, you put shoes on his feet, that he got a highway to walk now. That prodigal son had come back. He's back on that highway of holiness. Amen. I, it, it's never easy, brother. Amen. It's never easy. Sometimes it's hot. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's stony. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's contradiction. Sometimes there's nobody with you. Sometimes it's difficult at best. He said, put feet on the prodigal son. He's got home now. He's walking in the highway. And he'll walk. That's why he needs shoes. You know, the enemy works hard to make all things common. He tries to make you common. Well, that's just George. Well, that's just Bill, Billy, Susie, Carol. But see, if you're born again, you're not just Billy and Susie and Carol. You're a citizen of heaven. And so when you walk, you wear different shoes than most people. Your shoes are shod, with the, your feet are shod with the gospel of Christ. So when you start walking up the road, the gospel is always ahead of you. Satan don't like that. Every time you walk, he sees that gospel. That thus saith the Lord's a wonderful thing. That's just shoots. No, no, that's God coming. That's the word of God coming up that road. Look at his shoes. He's not a common man. No, sir. The Holy Ghost has shod his feet with the gospel. The thus saith the Lord is the foundation of all that he is. He's not a common man. He has the feet that the gospel of Christ is now motivated with and conforming and, and yielding and doing the will of God. Walk on a hot place. The word of God can take it. Jesus, come along great Savior of the world. They said, here's the Son of God. He said, everywhere he goes, he's doing good. Everywhere he goes, he's doing good. Everywhere he goes, he's doing good. Everywhere he goes, he's here one day, he's there somewhere else. Everywhere he goes, he's doing good. And the old devil kept looking back the whole time he was watching. He said, I'll tell you what we can do. If we can ever get a nail... And we can drive a nail in them feet. We'll stop that. You know, a, a, a nail is meant to keep something still. I said you put a nail in two boards to keep them still. And so Jesus is going, and everywhere he went, he did good. The power of God was with him. And Jesus walked, and he did the will of the Father. And so the demon-possessed world said, we tell what we're going to do, we'll stop that, and they laid him on the cross. And he put a nail through his feet. They nailed his feet tight. All of you see the crowd now. I believe some of you have heard this laugh at yourself. Well, they'll never walk again. They'll never walk again. I've stopped that. That, that, that person will never walk again. That when it come to count meeting, they'll never walk again. They took that nail and they drove it in the feet of Jesus. But what they didn't realize is they only nailed the natural feet to the cross. Oh, they looked up and said, you'll never, you'll never walk again. <laughs> you'll never walk again, you prophet. He bled and died. He gave up the ghost. Three days later. Three days later. Three days later. Here he comes walking. And then we thought we'd stop that walking. We thought we'd brought a trial. We thought we'd brought a tribulation. We thought we'd put a nail in that. We thought we'd crucify that. We thought we'd kill that. By God, here he comes. We only dealt with the natural feet. The spiritual glorified feet of the Savior brings him right back out of the grave again. You always have to separate the flesh and the spirit. If you don't, you get in trouble every time. Paul and Silas is walking through this world. It's interesting how the Bible says it. It says in Acts chapter 16, verse 24, it said that Paul and Silas, I'm pretty sure you know about Paul and Silas. We're just trying to be brief here tonight, but I can tell you they were ministers of the gospel. Paul made three fabulous missionary journeys, 
sacrificed absolutely everything, come to a place that no man stood with him. The world got a hold of him. And they said, I'll tell you what we can do. If we can ever stop you from moving, we got you. Well, he said, listen, you got Paul and Silas, let's put him in prison. And said, this is what we need to do. And the Bible is very specific with what he said. In Acts chapter 16, verse 24, it says there, made their feet. You don't walk on your hands, honey. You walk on your feet. They said, they won't miss, be missionaries no more. We have tied their feet up in stocks. They'll never walk again. But that night, there came an earthquake. And the next day, somebody's walking again. You understand? You see, that's faith feet. They say, we get this crowd. These are not ordinary people. These are not ordinary people. They walk in faith. They have feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. Their feet are beautiful. They're, they're from God. We tried to stop them from walking. But dear God, look at them. They're still walking up the road to Zion. One man, he made it clear in the scripture, he said, I want you to know everybody's going to face a mountain. Just everybody's going to face a mountain somewhere. You know, I, I used to believe that, you, you know, I took that one verse in, in the Gospels, you know, say to that mountain, mountain be thou removed. I've tried to remove every one of them. I try to remove all. I, I, every time I come to a mountain, brother, I thought if I prayed hard enough, I'd move it. Yeah, you just, this by faith, amen. Say it, be cast into the sea. Bless God, I'd stand there and sweat. I rebuked and I, my rebuker about broke. <laughs> Till I learned that I didn't have to move everyone, I could climb some of them. And when I learned I could climb some of them, my rebuker started working better. He said in the book of Samuel, said in the book of Habakkuk, he made it very clear. He said, There will come times that you will need hinds feet. Second Samuel 22, Psalms 18, Habakkuk 3. There will come times you will come to a mountain and that mountain will not be moved. He said, I'm going to help you because I told you to walk. I told you to walk before the Lord. I never asked you to do anything you couldn't do. He said, now you got a mount. So the mountain's not moved. He said, here's what I'm going to do for you. He said, I'm going to give you hind feet. Now you understand what I'm saying here tonight. I hope you heard the introduction because, you see, you have to understand every now and then you have to wash your feet because you've got to keep your feet clean because that's, that's what's carrying it everywhere else. And if you don't clean, keep your feet clean, you get in trouble with God. You get in trouble with people. You get in trouble with the Spirit. You have to stop every now and then to wash your feet. You walk in this world. You have to stop. It doesn't matter who you are. Stop at the labor. Wash your hands. Make sure that everything's right. Stays right with God because you see that the will of God is unfolding in your life. You've come to a mountain. Do we stop now? He said, no. You walk through a rough world. You're in a difficult place. You're at the greatest mountain of all your life. Now comes a supernatural manifestation. Now the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse number 6 says that, that Hines' foot was a parted hoof. Cleaveth to the cleft of two claws. Deuteronomy 14 and 6. We started off with man's foot here tonight. We had five and seven. Sometime, God said, I'm going to take over. It's just going to be two now. He said, he said because where you got to go now? He said, you've got to have a supernatural manifestation of my power to walk where you're going to walk now. He said, so since you've got to have a supernatural manifestation of my power to walk now, it's not five and seven. It's not God's grace. It's not God's completeness. But now it's two. Two means greater strength. Two means redoubled energy. Two means confirmed power. It's time for a power time. Two means friendship. Two means help. Two means deliverance. In other words, for a few minutes, I'm going to change your feet into something literally supernatural so you can climb a mountain. No longer five. No longer seven. Now it's down to two. A split hoof. The two is very prominent. So now it is supernatural. 
Book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 21 says, Naphtali is a hind, let loose. He, cle- he giveth goodly words because he had something within him. He had to walk to give it. He had to walk to give it. You look up that word hind, you learn one thing about that hind. That's the female deer. You look up that hind, you go from hind to heart to red deer, you'll find that that's a female. That hind is a female. She's climbing a mountain with something inside of her. She's climbing a mountain. She's got something to give. She's climbing a mountain. She's got something to birth. That hind is the female side of that, of, of, of that gender uh, of, of animals. It's the female. She's the one that carries it. She's the one that births it. She's the one that allows holy things to go where they're supposed to go. And so the hind climbs that mountain. And the devil says, you'll not stop the children of God from reaching the destination. And sometimes that walk, if you walk this thing long enough, turns into a run real easy. Like the it goes, we were worshiping God. It didn't take much to take that walk, turn it into a run. When you're walking right, it's always that possibility. Every now and then, a man has to run. Amen. The Bible makes that clear. Every now and then, it's not all walking. Every now and then, if he's walking right, he will have to run somewhere. It'll get too big. Amen. Like chewing frog legs, it'll get so big you have to do something with it. Somewhere that walk will break into a run. Hallelujah. G. Campbell Morgan made this great illustration. He said a young child had been to Sunday school and heard the lesson on Enoch walked with God. The young child got home. Mother asked, what did you learn at Sunday school? The child said, oh, you don't know, Mother, what we learned? said, no. said, one day Enoch went for an extra long walk with God, and they walked on and on until God said to Enoch, you are a long way from home. You'd better just come in and stay. And he went. One day we'll quit walking. One day we're going to quit walking. One day we're going to get there. One day we're going to get there.